चलो गैस लेट्स क्विकली रिवाइज चैप्टर नंबर सिक्स हायर परचेज विद हेल्प ऑफ आर समरी चार्ट फर्स्ट जर्नल एंट्री फॉर योर रेफरेंस आई हैव गिवन यू द जर्नल एंट्री फ्रॉम द टाइम यू गेट इन टू हायर परचेज अग्रीमेंट टिल रीपोसेशन वॉट एवर एंट्री यू पास इन द बुक्स ऑफ हायर परचेजर एंड हायर वेंडर for comparison purpose i put it in one table mm. let's quickly run through this first goods sold for a higher purchaser it will be normally a fixed asset purchased correct but for a higher vendor it will be a goods correct now for a furniture dealer furniture is a goods but for if you and i purchase furniture it will be a fixed asset so first journal entry in the books of higher purchases what or maybe first we'll finish off in the books of higher purchaser he has purchased a fixed asset under higher purchase system so the journal entry will be Fixed asset account debit or asset account debit to higher vendor account. Hmm. Second one, immediately when enter get into a higher purchase agreement, you need to make a down payment. So what is the journal entry for down payment paid? Who is this down payment paid to? Higher purchaser will make or will pay the down payment to higher vendor. So the journal entry will be higher vendor account debit to cash or bank account. Second entry. Now after this agreement, what will be expected? Every year or every half year or every quarterly, we have to pay installment. Yes, before installment, there will be interest accrued because there is a delay in payment. Higher purchaser also should pay interest to the higher vendor. So what is the journal entry? It is not interest account debit to bank. It is interest account debit to higher vendor account because what the higher purchaser pays is the installment money. Installment money will already include interest. Hence, the journal entry for interest in this case will be interest account debit to higher vendor account. Hmm. Next, you have to pay installment to whom? Higher vendor. What is the journal entry for installment paid to higher vendor? Higher vendor account debit to cash or bank account. Now, since we purchased higher purchaser purchased a fixed asset, those fixed assets might have to be depreciated. So the journal entry for that is depreciation account debit to asset account. Or if you are maintaining provision for depreciation, then the journal entry will be depreciation account debit to provision for depreciation. Is that okay? Right. Next. Now two expenses are there for higher purchaser. One is interest, another one is depreciation. Because interest is paid and depreciation is a non-cash expense. Both will be transferred off to P and L. So the transfer entry is P and L account debit to interest to depreciation. Is that okay? Guys? Next is a repossession. If higher purchaser defaults any payment or if he does not make any annual installment ka payment, then higher vendor will take back that asset. That we call it as repossession. Okay. Now, when higher purchaser purchases the fixed asset, the journal entry is fixed asset account debit to higher vendor. So, when he repossesses, ulta entries so that will be higher vendor account debit to asset or fixed asset account. Yes, this is a case of repossession. Now, after repossession, there will be some repairs and goods sold. All that will be made by higher vendor. Hence, in higher purchaser books, no entry for those will come. Okay. Okay. Now, similarly, we saw the journal entry in the books of higher purchaser next in the books of higher vendor same for a higher vendor he is dealing with that goods so it is not a fixed asset it will become your normal goods so normal goods sold what is the journal entry debtor's account debit to sale because higher vendor is not receiving the money right now he is getting the money later maybe 2 years 10 years or whatever down the line it's an installment we are recovering the money in installment so it's a credit sale so the journal entry is debtor's to sale instead of saying debtor's we say Higher purchaser account debit to sale or higher purchaser account debit to higher purchase sales also you can call it. Okay. Second down payment. Now higher vendor will may pay the down payment or he will receive the down payment. He will receive from whom? Higher purchaser. So the journal entry will be cash or bank account debit to higher purchaser account. Same thing interest. Higher purchaser pays interest to higher vendor. That means higher vendor is receiving that interest. What is the journal entry for interest received? Normally it is cash account debit to interest or bank account debit to interest but what higher vendor receives from higher purchaser is installment money meaning that installment money will all, already include interest hence the journal entry for interest in these cases will be higher purchaser account debit to interest is it okay next we're going to receive higher vendor is going to receive installment money from the higher purchaser which includes interest okay so the journal entry for this will be cash or bank account debit to higher purchaser account hmm. depreciation for higher vendor, these are goods, meaning purchase and sale of goods. So there is no depreciation for him on this. Same like interest and depreciation. Depreciation higher vendor will not have, but interest here for higher vendor is interest received. So it is an income. What is the journal entry for transferring an income to PNL? The journal entry will be interest account debit to PNL, or rather income account debit to PNL. Here income is PNL, so the interest rather. So the journal entry will be 
इंटरेस्ट अकाउंट डेबिट टू प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट बाई चांस इफ हायर परचेजर डज नॉट पे इंस्टॉलमेंट मनी देन हायर वेंडर विल रीप्रोसेस दो गुड्स यस सो वेन You go back when you when we sold the goods when higher vendor sells the goods the journal entries debtor's account debit to sales when it is repossessed ideally the entry should have been sales account debit to debtor's correct no because it's a return or sale return account debit to debtor's but instead of touching sales we open a specific account and the name of the specific account account is goods repossessed account instead of saying sales return account debit to debtor's or sales account debit to debtor's we say goods repossessed account debit to higher purchaser because higher purchaser is data for us right so this is the journal entry for when the goods gets repossessed okay now higher vendor is a dealer of the goods if he repossesses or if he takes back the goods he will not keep it with himself he will sell it off to somebody but if the goods are if the goods ka condition has deteriorated or if the condition is bad then we may have to incur some repairs we have to give some polishing to that goods to increase the quality and then sell it okay there could be a possibility a possibility of that so if there's any repairs incurred on goods repossessed what is the journal entry when you pay the repairs the journal entry is repairs account debit to bank when you incur the repairs now these repairs are is it general repairs or is it related to goods repossessed it's related to goods repossessed hence instead of transferring the repairs to p and l we transfer the repairs to goods repossessed that journal entry is instead of passing p and l account debit to repairs he will here will say goods repossessed account debit to repairs account as it is related to goods repossessed once repairs is done once the condition of the goods is restored then higher vendor will not keep those goods he will sell it off so when the goods repossessed are sold you will receive some cash so cash or check so the journal entry will be cash or bank account debit to what went out goods repossessed is gone now so that ledger you can close so the journal entry for that is bank account debit to goods repossessed account in one of the problem we had seen we have worked out goods repossessed also when in you when you prepare goods repossessed account if there is still any balancing figure that could represents profit or loss it's possible that we repossess the goods at 10000 rupees we sold it at 12000 rupees possible that means in this case it will be at 2000 rupees profit yes so if there is any profit on repossession the entry for that will be goods repossessed account debit to p and l or it could also be a case of loss if the goods repossessed if you are selling it at a loss meaning the condition has deteriorated or not you use repossessed at 7000 but you sold it for only or you repossessed at 10000 you were able to sell it only for 7000 that means this 3000 will be a loss then the journal entry will be p ulta entry of this which will be p and l account debit to goods repossessed in the problem that we had done it was a profit scenario maybe you could also get a loss on goods repossessed sold also that scenario also could come in okay this is the entry from end to end from the day you enter into hp agreement till the goods repossession what an all entry i just called out in this particular portion okay is all right next method of accounting we already seen for a higher purchaser and higher vendor there are two methods of accounting first we look at higher purchaser for a higher purchaser there are two methods of accounting sir one is cash price method which is also known as full cash price method the entry for that is same whatever we saw just now right in the books of higher purchaser entry those entry are same sir same thing will be replicated there is one more method known as what interest suspense method if you are doing interest suspense method then the funda is what you have to calculate the whole interest total interest payable under higher purchase agreement and that total interest has to be parked in parked in one dummy account you have to park it in one dummy and the name of the dummy is interest suspense account and whom we have to pay this interest to higher purchaser has to pay this interest to higher vendor so the journal entry for that will be interest suspense account debit to higher vendor not one year ka interest or two years ka interest it is a total interest under this higher purchase agreement we park it in interest suspense so the journal entry will be this now as and when the installment becomes due if it is annual installment and if the installment is payable at the end of the year first year first year end the installment will be due correct we actually have to pay interest then from interest suspense account we transfer it to interest account so the journal entry for that is interest account debit to interest suspense account this entry of the pass as in when the installment is due if it is annual installment due means annually you will pass this entry if it is half yearly means half yearly you will pass this entry quarterly means quarterly like this you have to go on passing the entry by the end of the higher purchase period let's say higher purchase period is 4 years by the end of that fourth year you would have passed this entry no four times or how many ever times and this interest suspense account would have become zero meaning it will get nullified so as long as you have the higher purchase agreement running interest suspense account also will be maintained by the end of that higher purchase agreement interest suspense account will get nullified that is the interest suspense method accounting in the case of higher 
purchaser. Now, if you come back in the books of higher vendor, higher vendor also has a two types of accounting. One is the sales method. Another one is interest suspense method. Sales method ka entry is same. What we just now read and came, right? Journal entry as per one. I've denoted this as one. Remember these entries. I showed you the entries now. Same. This is one. Okay. Same entries. However, if he is also following interest suspense, higher vendor, will he pay the interest or will he receive the interest? He will receive the interest. From whom? He'll receive the interest from higher purchaser. Now, the total interest which higher vendor has to receive, you need to calculate. For how many ever years is this total interest you need to calculate and park that interest in the park the total interest in a dummy account known as interest suspense so the journal entry is since we have to recover the money interest from higher purchaser the journal entry will be higher purchaser account debit to interest suspense account this will be for total interest receivable same like the previous method okay as and when the installment becomes due from interest suspense you need to transfer it to interest account is it okay for a higher vendor, it is interest received, meaning interest is an income. As per nominal account, interest income should be credited. So the entry you will pass is interest suspense account debit to interest account. This entry you pass as and when the installment is due. If it is annual installment due, you will pass this entry annually. So if the annual installment is four, then four times you will pass the same entry. By the end of that higher purchase agreement, interest suspense account here also will be nullified. So that is how the interest suspense method accounting works. Okay, we've seen a problem also on this. Just recapping it so that it will be easy for you to refer it on the last examination day. Hmm? Next one, cash price and interest table. In order to find a cash price and interest, we have a small table. I told you, remember the contents of this table. This table will work no matter which, what sort of workings they give. That table is contents go was. First is end of installment. Second is balance in the end of each installment. Third one is installment that you're receiving fourth one is cumulative amount fifth one is the interest column interest how do you get sir it is nothing but cumulative amount into rate divided by 100 plus rate last will be opening balance okay in every problem whatever four or five problems we have done we have put up the same table right so i've given this table because you need to remember that so that you can revise it again on the last day hmm? and then interest rate suppose they have given interest rate annually suppose they tell in the problem 10 interest rate is 10 percent per annum but if it is half yearly installment data, installment is payable half yearly, but the interest they have given annually, then can we use annual rate? No, we need to prorate. If the interest is 10% per annum, that means if the interest is 10% for 12 months, then for six months, how much? Like this, you need to prorate. That is what I've written here. Interest rate, you'll have to take, take the rate given and multiply it by six by 12. If they have given half yearly installment. Okay. And that also we have seen in one of the problem that contains have just brought into the chart. Next, if annuity, you know, annuity factor is given in the question, then using annuity factor, you can find out the cash price. How do you get cash price? It is nothing but annual installment, which in our problem was 30,000. If you remember one of the question, we took that 30,000 and multiplied by 2.76 something. That was annuity factor. So take the annual installment multiplied by the annuity factor. That's going to give you the cash price of that particular asset. This is another way to find out the cash price. One way is to put up the table and find out. Another way is used to is to use the annuity factor. Hmm? All right. Last one is if interest rate itself is not given in the problem. So if interest rate is not given in the problem means you can't adopt the stable method. For you to know adopt the stable method, interest rate is a must. If that is missing, then what do we do? We have to assume any two interest rate. Any two, doesn't matter. In our problem, we assumed it as 6 and 12, right? So any two interest rate you can assume and you can find out the correct interest rate by using something known as interpolation formula the thing that we solved in the problem, right? I explained to you logically without using the formula, right? But that steps, we call it, what we solved in the class, we call it as interpolation formula, okay? So these are the things we learned under higher purchase system. So with the summary chart is also over. Thank you.